Do you want to add yourself or anyone else for that matter in Unreal Engine? Well, this video is for you. I've banged my head against this topic for quite a while and I finally figured out a proper easy-ish workflow that can get you there as fast as possible. And this isn't just compositing your green screen footage and After Effects over some 3D background plate. This is actually putting yourself in the world, in the 3D world. So in the case of Unreal Engine, we're adding a plane and we're basically feeding an image sequence of your keyed out video to that plane as a material. And this way you can actually have it in your scene. It can react to the camera movement in your 3D world. Then even objects in the foreground can occlude your character that you're placing in the world. And that feels so much more grounded. So I think this is the way to go when we're talking about virtual production, compositing and adding people in 3D worlds. So let's jump in and let's see how to do that. So obviously when you're placing your character into a world, you kind of need to start from the world. Where is this even taking place? What's the backstory here? What's the mood? What's the lighting? And obviously that could be a whole video on itself. And we've kind of covered a little bit of, of this on the channel before, certain aspects of level design and, and establishing mood and tone. And that's really the currency when you're building out your 3D scenes. So with that in mind, you can shoot your footage in front of the green screen so the lighting can match that vibe and match that also direction and placement that you're imagining in the world. So once you have all your clips for your sequence that you have in mind, it's time to key them out. Now, as a side note, I did process some of these clips through CapCut, uh, which is very unusual and only probably because I shot on a phone, but it was really cool to kind of separate the subject from the background and be able to kind of lift the shadows and maybe bring up the contrast of the green of the green screen. Totally optional, but once in After Effects for the actual key, I brought in my exported sequence from CapCut in my case, and then I basically split all the different cuts that I had within that export. Then with the pen tool in After Effects, I did a very rough mask around my subject, making sure that there's no limbs or any crossover and feathered that out quite a bit. And then I just simply added the key light effect and picked the color green from my scene. You wanna pick sort of an average color. And then from there, I'm gonna go into combine matte to actually look at what the key is doing to my footage. So on the screen matte, I can increase the clip black parameter, which can helpfully get rid of some of that noise in the green screen. And that gives us a very simple key. But sometimes it's not that simple. Like in this case, we have this hat kind of going over our border of our green screen. And for that, I'm gonna duplicate it. And with the bottom layer selected, I'm gonna do the same step. So add key light effect, select the green in my scene. And you know, you can mess with this a little bit. Now in the top layer instead, I'm actually gonna make this visible again. And with the rotor brush tool selected, I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna start to basically roughly sketch around my head and mostly hat area here. And then you can just hit this freeze button, which is basically gonna isolate that selection that you've made if it looks good to you. And that gives us an isolated head. So now with the bottom layer selected of our key, we can make a rough mask around that ceiling area that we were looking at. Now, if I leave that mask to add, it's gonna look like I'm decapitated, which is not what we're going for in this effect. And so I'm gonna set it to subtract. Now, let's say you want to do the opposite. Maybe there is part of the roto brush selection of the clip that is kind of messy. Well, in that case, we actually have to create a new solid to act as a mat for that layer. We can rename it mat for head. And we're going to make sure that our footage layer can actually see, you know, that solid as its track mat for its alpha. Now, if we go back to that solid again, and we now create, let's say, like an ellipse tool mask, then we can see that it's creating that effect immediately. And we can kind of select how much of that roto brush portion of the clip we want to keep. So now that we have our footage all sorted and ready for Unreal Engine, here is, here's the fun part. This is how you bring it in to Unreal. And there's gonna be a few steps for this, but if you follow everything along, you should be able to just get this right. Just familiarize yourself with the engine as much as possible. And all of these things are gonna be 
less overwhelming hopefully it's honestly not going to be that bad so let's jump into unreal and let's bring in our image sequence that we exported from after effects so a good rule of thumb is to export a png obviously with its alpha and then in our content browser in unreal we can basically create a new folder for all of these assets that we're going to be creating to uh, get ourselves in Unreal. So inside that new folder that I called video integration, it could be any name of a character, maybe you're an actor that you have. And then within that folder, I'm going to assign the individual shots that we basically have for that person. So I'm starting with a wide shot for me. And now in this folder, finally, we can add under media, an image media source element. And we can rename this MS for media source and then the name of the shot. Now, if I open this, uh, you can see that there's some options, but we don't have to worry about much other than this section here where we can actually pick our image sequence. So we're gonna navigate to that and I'm gonna select the first frame of my sequence and just hit open and it's gonna recognize that as my image sequence. Now, very important under advanced and frame rate override, you wanna set it to the same frame rate as your footage. So in my case, that's 24 frames per second. And now for the next part, we already have one step done, which is great. We're gonna right click again, and we're gonna go under media once more. And this time we're gonna grab a media player. We're gonna make sure to check that box that says video output media texture asset, because that is what we want. And then we're gonna rename this MP for media player, and then maybe the same name as our shot. And now we can jump into our scene and we can create a new element and under shapes, we can grab a plane and drag it right into our environment. So I'm gonna rotate it up 90 degrees and just roughly place it where I think I'm gonna place my character. Now from our folder, I'm gonna drag and drop the media player asset onto that plane that we just created in our scene. And that's gonna create a new material in our folder that we created for this sequence that we're trying to make. Now, one more thing that we have to do is add a level sequence. And I'm gonna to navigate to that same folder again, save it as LS, the same Y name. Now, very important in this level sequence that we created, we also wanna match that frame rate of 24 frames per second in my case. And now we have a level sequence that we can create animations in, that we can play our footage through. So this is basically what puts everything in motion for us. So to see that, to see our footage being played as a material, we wanna track a new media element in our timeline. So there we can tell it to track a media source and we can select that media source that we created. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. Now we want to right click on that new media source in the timeline, go under properties, and we want to select the media texture. So from there, just find the one that you named and then just click away. And now we have our footage in our scene. Although if I go to unlit mode to look a little better um, upside down. So you want to make some adjustments, obviously rotate it the right way, place it in the right spot. Uh, maybe you might have to de-squeeze a little bit. I'm just kind of going by eye for these tests. I'm sure there's a more scientific way to do it. But now we can drag a camera in our level so we can actually see our subject and make a little scene. And we're gonna track that camera in our level sequence. So once you have something selected, you can actually bring it in. And now we can animate any aspect of the camera, such as its position. So maybe we can do a little dolly in animation. We can, you know, scrub forward in our timeline here and we can move the, uh, let's go under location and we can move the camera left to right, up and down, or in this case, back and forward to kind of get our dolly shot. And you can see that it generates new keyframes for us there at the end. So now we can uh, play this back and uh, enjoy a nice little camera move. But before we do that, I wanna mention that this shot that I can move up here, we can actually extend to make this kind of camera view last longer. And you can see that I'm scrubbing these numbers at the end here, and I'm actually making my sort of view of my timeline also larger. I can also grab this red line, our endpoint, and make our work area uh, larger. I'm not sure if that's the name of it, but that's what it reminds me of in After Effects. And then I can grab those keyframes that we created and push them out. And that's because our take was actually longer than that initial selection that we were working in. So now if I go to lit mode and I play this back, you can see that our footage is playing in our scene and we're getting a nice camera movement and everything's working fine. So that is 
huge. That's the process. You can add lights. This is a real plane, so it's real geometry in your scene that will react to lighting. It's incredible. But now if you want to make some additional adjustments to the material, maybe we want to have control over things like contrast or the brightness of the actual footage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that original material and I'm going to create a material instance of that material. And it's basically creating a child uh, material that looks at that parent material. Now in that parent material, I've actually added MF chroma key here. So we want to go from the RGB of our uh, image sequence into the input color and then from the emissive color of that node we basically want to plug that into the base color of our material basically what we're outputting i also grab the rgba value and i plug that into the specular that just uh, allowed the black values of the footage to be true black but then finally the alpha just goes straight into the opacity mask and that's the material setup for the parent. So now in the material instance, we can have access to things like brightness and a bunch of other stuff that is really cool. You just have to make sure that the color correction amount is checked and that that value is set to one. And then you can have access to all the other features to uh, match your footage. Now, this is a careful balance between, you know, adjusting things like the brightness, uh, but also seeing how far you could push that versus maybe what it would look like to bring in a light closer. It's a balance because because pushing either side too far could break the effect. Now, speaking of which, what really breaks the effect is your environment. So you have to really make sure that you are, you know, putting a lot of time in creating detail and creating life into your world that you're presenting in Unreal. And if you spend enough time with the right tricks and ideas in mind, you can really make a lot of things look really realistic. So really think about where in your scene you're gonna be focused on the most, where is your camera being placed, where is your character being placed. Try to enrich that with as much detail as you can and just have fun with it, you know, spend time. Don't just think like, oh, I have to finish this for whatever deadline. Just really take your time, sit with it, just, just keep adding to it. And then eventually you can get to something that can be sort of photorealistic on camera, especially with enough shadows and kind of hiding things with lighting, you can get away with a lot. And when we're adding people, usually we're focusing on the people. So the background can be, you know, a little bit more forgiving. And this is true with 3D, but also in real life with real sets. A lot of times it's just cardboard, plywood. When they're thrown out of focus, you can't really tell. And I can't tell you how much I love level design and creating this stuff in Unreal. And it's made so easy with their marketplace. Also, you can find a bunch of materials and assets so you can really develop different environments of literally whatever comes to mind and you don't have to know that much about modeling and all of that you know it's always nice to build upon the assets and not just like asset flip but you know it's it's so nice to be able to leverage so many artists and this is a great segue to the sponsor of this video because it is a marketplace for all things video music sound effects and now they actually just launch a new voiceover feature to motion array and it's as easy as writing a prompt hitting generate and then downloading if you like it and the quality honestly speaks for itself. Check this out. Welcome to Tech Trends, your go-to source for the latest in technology. Today, once upon a time, in a tiny village that was just too quaint for its own good, there I need you to hear this. Your future isn't just something that's handed to you. It's something you build day by day. And I really feel inspired by the content possibilities when when hearing this, you know, you think of all the ways that you can use certain voices and different types of genres. Unreal Engine is an amazing tool for filmmakers that want to tell big stories. The quality is insane. And what Motion Array now brings to the table with so much customization and different styles of voices, it is honestly mind blowing. For example, let's try that last prompt, but with a little more excitement. Unreal Engine is an amazing tool for filmmakers that want to tell big stories. Whether you're doing temp work for voiceovers or even the real deal, these AI voices actually sound very human. They have certain breathing and certain imperfections and it makes it sound very natural. But honestly, I encourage you to just go on the platform. First of all, look at the amount of templates and everything else that's on there because it is that's honestly already worth the subscription immediately. But with this new tool of these AI voices, if you just browse through them, you're gonna see the potential and hopefully they'll inspire you for also your own projects of where these voices could fit and what they could be saying. 
So huge shout out to Motion Array and definitely make sure to use my link in the description. It'll be the first thing you see above the fold. Make sure to use that, that supports the channel. So huge shout out to Motion Array. Thanks for sponsoring this video. So there we go. We just explored such a tiny part of virtual production of literally rolling down a paper backdrop in my living room and just having fun and playing. I shot it with an iPhone. Uh, you know, I want to step it up and try the whole workflow with my red camera. So maybe in part two, we'll be doing that. But let me know if you enjoyed this type of video. Let me know if you want to see more Unreal Engine related stuff. I'm probably going to be making it regardless because it's I've been saying for years that it's the future of film, but it's just going to be such an all encompassing program that I think that if you're not just in post and film, but in film in general, you really should become familiar with it. Uh, and uh, hopefully this video was a good start at that. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Carr, and I'll see you next time.